of course, Facebook was one of Elevation's most important investments, and now you're trying to build a social network that doesn't have hate or misinformation or many of the things that Facebook uh, ha has re more recently been challenged by. What exactly is your goal here? Uh, Emily, our goal is to create uh, a space where people can have great conversation. Uh, we're really narrowly focused on conversation where people uh, who have an interest can find other people that share that interest uh, and talk about it in a space, usually with people that they don't know previously in the real world. Now, it's invitation only to start. Like many early tech platforms, you're supposed to use your real name. You are supposed to use your real name on Facebook. And your first rule, be kind. What makes you think you can actually get users to do that? Facebook has 30,000 content moderators, and even they can't do it. So our... Our view is that if you start out with strong rules and strong systems when you're small, uh, you can basically create a culture where people uh, are kind and where uh, you don't have a ton of disinformation. Uh, and this is really a combination of people and software. Uh, we require you to, people to use their real names. Uh, they have to have a phone number, which we verify with carrier ID. So we think that uh, the bots and fake accounts problem uh, won't be as bad. It's our intent over time to address disinformation by creating trust ratings for different sources uh, and reducing distribution for outlets that we believe uh, recurringly publish fake news. So our intent as we get bigger is to use systems and people to scale. Some of your early users include the guy running Instagram himself, Adam Masseri. I saw Reid Hoffman on there when I took a peek. Do you envision this reaching a wide audience, or is this more like a you know, smaller, curated set of people? And, and, and if you do envision it reaching a big audience, how do you handle some of this stuff at scale? So our intent is that uh, it should be a great experience for anybody that likes to talk uh, and have conversation about topics. It's not intended to be a, you know, a, a horizontal social network that does everything. It's not a place to share videos, for example. Um, uh, it's really a place for people to, if you have one interest, you know, narrow or broad, you find others that want to, uh, that share that interest and want to, and want to talk about it. And again, as we, you know, as we get bigger, our philosophy has been to double and then see what's broken and fix that. Uh, and we believe by making kindness and no fake news, you know, important company priorities that we can keep that culture uh, and that tone even as we get bigger. Now, it's not lost on anyone that your sister-in-law is Cheryl Sandberg. How is Cheryl and the family taking this? You know, uh, I have not been super focused in thinking about other companies, nor is Richard. Um, Facebook and Google and TikTok and other, you know, Snapchat, Twitter are so huge. Our focus has really been very narrow. Um, and so I've been working on this for a couple of years. I tend to, uh, my, my, Wife and kids are on the site, so it's it you know it's not like we're hidden in a cave, but in general we tend not to think about the big companies because the big companies we don't see ourselves as like providing some enormous all-encompassing experience that's an alternative to that. Hmm. That really said, you know that. your your former Indy, I I would like to hear more, but but um, we'll leave it there. Um, you're. Elevation co-founder Roger McNamee, he's a guest on our show often. He's become one of Facebook's staunchest critics. I mean, clearly you're doing this because you don't think the alternatives out there are necessarily an option for a lot of people. He has said that Facebook is a threat to what remains of our democracy and has, has too much power. Do you agree with him? You know, I was a very early user of a bunch of social platforms, you know, ten starting maybe a little bit more than 10 years ago. And... What I loved about the early social internet was 
finding people, you know, I would have some narrow interest. None of my friends in the real world shared that interest because they thought I was crazy to be so intensely focused on this film or uh, psychology or parenting. And then, you know, whether it was on Facebook or Quora uh, or forums, I would be able to find people. And so our goal at Telepath in some sense is to recreate uh, what those early communities felt like. Um, you know, so we'll see, I don't know, you know, that's really, that's in some sense, what really motivates Richard and I is to recapture, you know, I look back over the last 10, 12 years, and I think more than half of the friends I've made, new friends, started off on the internet. Uh, and so we'd like to be able to create that experience for our users. Now, TikTok has very much been in the news and has provided stiff competition to Facebook and has offered a new kind of social network. The people behind TikTok say they want to be an uplifting place for users to go. What are your thoughts on, on TikTok as an alternative? So, I mean, I guess I have like two kind of opposing views. On the one hand, it's super fun. Like, I use it a lot. It's really enjoyable. I do think it's like, uh, makes me feel good. Um, I think it's like actually remarkably good about politics sometimes, uh, and obviously music. But, you know, I read a lot of Ben Thompson from Stratechery, and he has, his writing has persuaded me that, you know, the political issues that have been identified by many people, you know, involving TikTok are potentially dangerous. So I'm kind of split. Right. 